would like to acknowledge two co-authors that are contributing important uh, data and information to this, this talk, uh, Fernando Alferez from SwiftREC and Mike Irie from uh, Southern Garden Citrus. So the topics for discussion are mainly based in the first part of the talk on observation. This is a new, relatively new technology that's been deployed in only a few years. Uh, so a lot of this is grower uh, driven uh, uh, testing of these uh, covers and the observations that they make, they share, and the observations I make, uh, I present today. Uh, and we want to, uh, along the line of, of the research going forward for probably several seasons to come, is assessing the tree growth response, because that's an important component of the covers, uh, as I'll show you. Of course, exclusion of the, of the vector, uh, and the diseases and pests that this uh, cover might uh, uh, lead to with more conducive conditions underneath the, uh, in the bag, in the cover. And then uh, finally, a model that Mike Irie developed uh, predicting the potential economic benefit. And I stress that this is a model, but it may be a useful indicator of how these uh, covers should be best deployed. So as far as installation, uh, to begin, uh, the idea of these bags that growers find uh, important it may not be so important as I'll show you, is creating space for this uh, canopy to develop with, with as little as possible restriction of the uh, canopy as it fills up the bag over time. So there's different uh, types of configurations, uh, some called trifold, some called pillowcase, uh, some uh, uh, taller than others, and they're basically mounted on a center post of PVC. In some cases, there are brackets that are inserted into that PVC pipe, and then that would spread the uh, trifold bag or the, uh, the volume of the bag and, and, and uh, increase that uh, volume. But uh, one must be aware that when you create that kind of a kite-like configuration, you see uh, the wind catches it. So this is something that's usually uh, done after establishment of the tree when it's well anchored in the ground after planting. And then there's uh, been some experimentation with different types of, uh, not just center posts, but uh, different configurations of posts to expand the uh, bag and keep it expanded uh, over time. So one important thing uh, for the reasons that you're uh, putting a protective cover on the tree, not just for the psyllids, and their ability to enter the bag, or the uh, cover, but also uh, crawling insects like uh, Diaprepes adults, grasshoppers, and, and other uh, larger arthropods. So the types of ways that this uh, bottom of the bag is secured is to uh, either over the, uh, the wrap on the tree or tucked into the wrap on the tree. It's uh, anchored with a twist with a, a, a twist tie or a, a PVC tie at the bottom that can be uh, removed and if you wanted to get in there and do sprout removal and so forth, that's something that can be uh, easily uh, installed and, and, and uninstalled. So looking at the uh, performance now more so, uh, after a few years of growing in the bag, and the constraining of the canopy growth, uh, you obviously see there, as encircled there in the uh, lower right-hand corner of the slide, you see some twisting of the uh, branches that, that may uh, concern some growers, but has not concerned some other growers that uh, observe the growth after the bag is removed and see that those uh, branches uh, straighten themselves out. Uh, this is the uh, plasticity or flexibility of the tree canopy in, in filling up the bag, but then expanding further as that bag is removed over time. So here we have trees that were back for two years, uh, and then the tree cover removed last fall, and now you're looking at the tree in the following uh, midsummer, and you've got uh, the grower there for a, a 
comparison of the scale, the height of these trees, and the robustness of the uh, canopy. So you're looking at a tree in the third season here with uh, a canopy volume that's quite robust and, and, and greater than uh, a non-covered tree, I think in most everybody's experience. And then this concern about the twisting. Uh, you see a branch that was twisted, that this branch uh, over the next uh, about uh, six months, six, eight months, as this branch is straightened out. And so the canopy architecture, I think you can see, has regained its uh, normal appearance uh, with, with the twisting uh, correct, correcting itself uh, with, with growth after uh, removal. So the performance of these trees under the bags uh, can be quite impressive, uh, particularly, particularly with those varieties that are quite vigorous. And Sugar Bell, I think, in everyone's experience, is very uh, prolific in producing canopy volume very quickly. And here is a Sugar Bell tree after five months post-installation of the bags right after planting. And you see the bag already filled, uh, this is a trifold bag filled uh, to what? looks to be capacity. Uh, lesser uh, vigorous root uh, scions like Hamlin uh, compared to Sugar Bell uh, after a year are starting to fill that, that volume. These are what are known as or uh, measured as four foot bags. Again, they, they're growing to the top of that uh, PVC post in the middle, uh, inserted in the middle next to the tree wrap. So there's quite an impressive appearance of the canopy's uh, volume increase uh, over time and uh, I'd like to present some preliminary data to support that here in a minute. But an important uh, observational uh, and, and challenge type of test is whether these bags do in fact exclude psyllids. Uh, this is a, a trial that uh, was arranged with Bill Dawson in the psyllid room at Lake Alfred, CREC. And Bill's observations are ongoing over many years that the uh, psyllids grow or grow, they fly to the light. They fly up to the lights in this uh, growth room. They don't fly down away from the light. And they go up, if not uh, up to the lights, they go across but not down. So here you have uh, the bag uh, there on the left and the bag is left open, more or less kind of open. But psyllids never uh, go to that part of the uh, the uh, IPC, they, they stay either at the same level that they were introduced from the, uh, uh, the uh, source plant or they go up to the lights. And so this is a indication that you know, rigorous exclusion of the psyllids crawling in from the bottom, unlike uh, with crawling insects like diapreppes, is not so much of a concern. That's not to say to leave the bag open at the bottom, but some Growers observe uh, uh, leaf drop and they like to remove the leaves, they like to open the bags and, and do some removal of sprouts. So there's reasons for the, the grower to want to have this uh, bag open at the bottom from time to time. So the conditions inside of the, uh, the uh, cover are obviously different from that of the uh, plant that's uncovered and you see some things that are both very positive and, and uh, what we like to see and that is uh, large, robust uh, flushes and leaves on the, on the canopy underneath the bag. But also the uh, predisposition uh, that's potentially uh, there with the uh, increase in humidity, perhaps, or temperature or both, that leads to more conducive conditions for uh, foliar diseases like greasy spot and maybe some of the pests that might uh, be favored underneath these bags that are, that are not excluded by the screen itself, for example, mites. Uh, so these are things that with observation we'll learn more about. But as far as a, a field trial of this uh, cover system, uh, this is a trial that Fernando Alferez has set up. It was coordinated by Manji Zekri and sponsored by the Tree Defender. Uh, and in this trial, there's replicated plots of with or without Tree Defender, and then three rates of a uh, 
Uh, no, no treatment, half rate and full rate, uh, according to the label. Uh, and then the uh, important thing about this trial is not only that it's well replicated in space, but also that he's monitoring the uh, conditions underneath the bag as well as outside of the, the, the covers uh, with this uh, hobo uh, environmental monitoring system. So inside the uh, bag, the trees, or inside the cover, the trees uh, look, grow more robustly and they look greener. So what does that uh, translate to when you measure something like leaf chlorophyll as a proxy for maybe higher rates of photosynthesis? And Fernando uh, did these measurements in January at the beginning of the trial, and then more recently in June. June, and uh, you see this increase in the chlorophyll uh, measured here, uh, and it's fairly highly significant uh, quantitatively and uh, statistically. So there's an indication that the trees are growing in a way under the bags, under the covers, that's uh, a, a more conducive condition for what we would then want to measure uh, ultimately is a rate of photosynthetic uh, response, as, as was measured earlier with uh, the, uh, the uh, surround. But here in uh, the measurement uh, in this particular case with this uh, environmental monitoring was a measurement that is also important for predicting whether photosynthetic uh, production is higher, and that is vapor pressure deficit. And as you look at that solid line, uh, with the uh, individual protective cover, uh, you see that vapor pressure deficit is, is more consistent over time and lower over time. And these are the conditions that are more conducive for stomates to remain open longer day in and day out, and for photosynthesis to continue for a longer duration day in and day out. This is uh, related to the humidity, the temperature, at the surface of the leaves. These are conditions that are known to uh, increase uh, photosynthetic uh, activity and then longevity of activity. So importantly, uh, what's going on under these uh, covers needs to be measured over time. And as I said, this uh, trial started in January, so the data is preliminary or, or, or uh, you know, just the most starting responses that you see uh, in here. You're looking at rootstock diameter and scion diameter. This is the best measure, uh, integrated measure of tree growth uh, of young trees. And you see in, in all cases with different rates of imenocloprid that uh, you're getting a positive response in terms of tree caliber over just a five month period. Uh, ordinarily in trials of young trees that I've been involved in with different treatments, we like to do that measurement on an annual basis to see a significant difference. So these significant, these differences, although not significant, are all uh, in the same direction, the same order of magnitude. It looks like imidacloprid as a potential uh, growth uh, stimulator uh, as a neonicotinoid. It has hormonal uh, responses, engenders uh, hormonal responses in the tree. That all these uh, directions of responses are positive and of the same direction and don't really differ with the imidacloprid rate or plus, uh, presence or absence of it. So there's a lot of information in this uh, model that Mike Irie is sharing uh, with us. And I can't go through it in, in great detail, but I can tell you that all the things that uh, one would want to be able to uh, modify or, or as inputs into the uh, model spreadsheet, uh, Things like uh, the variety, the uh, tree density, trees per acre, the value of the fruit, the produ production that might be predicted based on experience uh, of the grower with a particular variety and its uh, particular growth, the cost of control. Uh, in practice, you are not having to apply insecticides for psyllids any longer with the, with the uh, cover placed uh, in place. You might be spraying some uh, miticides for, for mites uh, to, as a preventative. You're certainly going to be spraying some copper, perhaps, for uh, foliar disease. Uh, but you have a very significant uh, amount of savings of insecticide applications uh, per season, both soil applied and, and uh, 
fully are applied. And then looking at the rate of HL increase based on data sets that have been uh, gathered here in Florida with young trees uh, can be used to predict what rate of HLB infection will occur uh, without the bag in place and then with the bag in place for different numbers of seasons uh, going from uh, one season on up to uh, several seasons. In many seasons you want to uh, perhaps leave a tree protected, want a tree protected uh, with the bag for exclusion. Uh, so the, bo the point here is that there are a lot of parameters that can be uh, put into this model that can be adjusted to uh, arrive at uh, the next slide here, the output, that I think is a, a very important starting point for predicting how best to deploy uh, these individual protective covers. And that is that the model predicts the return uh, on the investment in the uh, tree cover to be that of keeping the tree cover on for two seasons and then removing uh, the cover. And then during the third season, wherein the tree did not flower and fruit under the cover in the first two seasons, or when it was covered, you remove the cover and then you get uh, flowering and fruit set. But that flowering and fruit set by observation so far has not been up to the, that of a, a tree that would not be covered. So right now we're, uh, he's adjusting, Mike is adjusting in the model, uh, a 50% uh, production in the first season after uh, bag the uh, tree cover removal that is, is predicted there uh, to be, the, after the second year, uh, the best economic return on the investment in, in the bag and then the uh, prop response to that uh, installation. And I think that makes things uh, as a starting point for what size of bag uh, to, tr to trial. Uh, that being that the larger the bag, the more expensive or more costly the bag uh, cover, and make, no matter what the uh, uh, again, make and model the back or the cover. That uh, two years with the cover and then removal uh, and then starting a reproductive activity after that time uh, it seems to be the predicted best uh, return. So there's an important starting point. It's based on a prediction. So experience will uh, confirm this or validate this particular prediction. Uh, so here we have a, a starting point for this uh, in the use. And the important uh, outcome of this model are these two graphs, and that is the infection delay that you're getting here uh, is, it seems small and, and insignificant, but has a very profound predicted effect on the production of the tree, and that's the return on the investment is this yield response. And that yield response is longevity of expression out uh, a full nine years based on this predictive model. So with this delay in, uh, in the infection process, you're getting a very large benefit. And the reason for this is the earliness of the protection of the trees and the tree's uh, development and the tree's ability to get into its reproductive uh, behavior or, or cycle free of the disease. So here you have the longer term benefit of this uh, cover that uh, I think really uh, is the driving force for wanting to uh, now deploy these uh, covers uh, in an area-wide basis or in a uh, reset or an area-wide basis at a perimeter basis uh, to uh, protect these trees and, and reduce the uh, psyllid uh, infection rates that we see uh, uh, are way too, uh, too high to withstand with the uh, current uh, use of insecticides. So the conclusions, again, are based on large part on observations and predictions, uh, but I think some things are, are pretty certain, and that is the covers prevent uh, transmission and HLB infection for the time that they're in place and then for some time maybe beyond that, keeping the, the tree disease free. And that uh, I think there's some fairly good information already that shows that the covers promote tree growth 
And normal canopy development, which might be a concern with the uh, constraint of the uh, canopies development under the bag after removal, uh, is, is self-correcting. That we need to be on guard that the uh, covers uh, create a microenvironmental a condition that is going to probably lead to some pest and some disease uh, outbreaks under the cover and that you're probably best to be managing these uh, resets uh, or solid blocks with some uh, insecticide, miticide particularly, and, uh, and, and fungicide sprays. And incidentally, the uh, evaluations of that spray getting through these mesh bags, these 50 mesh bags, is that it does penetrate these bags with a speed sprayer application. So you are getting active ingredient into this uh, bag into the leaf surface. As far as optimum profitability as predicted by the model, that would uh, be based on the model, two years of bag installation then removal. And then the tree goes into a reproductive uh, cycle. And then what has been observed, at least with one uh, of these uh, individual covers is uh, with Tree Defender, the uh, durability of that uh, particular uh, cover is such that when the crop has been covered for two years and the bag is removed, that bag is, is still very quite usable for reinstallation on subsequent uh, uh, generations of resets in a particular row operation. So. Uh, I use the analogy of Reese wraps, which were used as uh, wraps back in the day when we had more freeze risk, that they would be reused for uh, several cycles, uh, could be stored uh, and then uh, uh, reinstalled over time yeah, because they were durable. So I would say that that is part of your calculation of, this, of its economic return as well. So with that, I'm... Uh, Taking some questions, Michael? Any questions for Dr. Graham? I have a question. Yes, sir. Well, why do you think that the tree doesn't flower and, fruit set, and set fruit normally after you take the, leave the bag on? Is there a yeah, so the question is, why is flowering not occurring, flowering and fruit set under the uh, cover? And this, again, is observational, uh, experiential. This is one of those... Uh, researchable questions that uh, Fernando Alvarez will be undertaking. Uh, you, could, you could think about the physiology of the tree under this uh, envi microenvironmental condition uh, and, and what that would be in a juvenile vegetative stage versus removing the bag, changing that environmental condition and the tree going into a reproductive uh, cycle. But it's a very important uh, researchable component to this whole process is there, there are ways to promote that uh, conversion from vegetative to reproductive behavior after we move the bag. It's, that's extremely important uh, to uh, research and, and enhance, uh, promote as much as possible. Yeah, right down there. Okay, just to sort of repeat the points uh, that, the, the, uh, that were made is that freeze protection can be deployed under the, the bag if it's of a configuration that can accommodate that. And I just heard a report of a grower having done that today. So there are different ways that growers are, are experimenting, if you will, deploying these bags, uh, covers, different designs, different configurations. That, uh, 
It was mentioned the pillow bag might be a better configuration for this sort of thing. Uh, and then the uh, exacerbation of spider mites, if I think I heard you correctly, underneath the bag, and then the uh, risk of that, uh, that the, the bags would be on not as long as I've been uh, suggesting here. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Dr. McGarren.